Thank you, Mr. President. Listening to my friend, the uh, Democratic whip, reminds me that there is one type of business that our Democratic friends always support, and that's the lawsuit business. As he pointed out, uh, about half of the states have taken steps to protect their citizens from frivolous litigation and other litigation that would arise out of their good faith following of the guidelines laid down by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. That is what we proposed here in the, uh, in the uh, Senate. Um, and my friends, uh, the senator from Illinois' view did prevail because I found out that there is one, uh, the, the most powerful lobby here in Washington, D.C. is the trial bar. Um, and unfortunately, it's not just big corporations. I'm, I'm, I'm sure big companies can take care of themselves. They've got lawyers, they've got compliance officers, they've got people who can help them figure out how to deal with the pandemic. It's the mom and pop businesses, the uh, music venues, the uh, houses of worship, the schools, the universities. Those were the ones that were reluctant to reopen, even complying with the CDC guidelines, because they were afraid of being sued into oblivion. So my, my colleagues' views did prevail here in the Senate, unfortunately, but uh, thankfully, states like mine, Texas, that's currently in the legislative session, is taking appropriate steps uh, to avoid this sort of frivolous litigation, which will be like a wet blanket on our economic recovery and on job creation. Um, again, this is not uh, a get out of jail free card. This is citizens, American citizens, trying to do the best they can under very difficult circumstances who have in good faith complied with the Center for Disease Control guidelines. But Mr. President, I'd like to rewind just a little bit to 2019 before the pandemic hit and uh, recall that the American people were reaping the benefits of one of the strongest economies in American history. The driving force behind that economic boom, I think, was in significant part the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which we passed in 2017, which sought to help American families and the economy thrive by keeping more of what they earn and turning over less to the federal government. In my opinion, there's no question that it was one of the biggest contributors to our booming economy. Our national unemployment rate had reached a 50-year low, and we saw record unemployment rates for Hispanics and African Americans, Asian Americans. Unemployment among women fell to the lowest rate since the early 1950s. That was pre-pandemic. The benefits did not stop there, though. Wages were on the rise, the poverty rate hit an all-time low, and millions of new jobs were being added to our economy. Families were bringing home more of their hard-earned paychecks, and median household income reached a record high. But then the pandemic hit, as we know, and things took a very sharp turn downward. Businesses closed their doors, workers lost their jobs, and the unemployment rate skyrocketed from 3.5% to nearly 15% in April. Fortunately, this dark economic picture is gradually brightening thanks to the uh, investment we've made in therapeutics and vaccines in a historically short period of time, thanks to the ingenuity and perseverance of workers and business owners, combined with the assistance that Congress has given them, and like I said, advancements in modern science. We have made steady progress. The unemployment rate steadily declined over the last year, reaching 6% in March. But the new data from April is a cause for concern. The unemployment rate increased by a tenth of a percentage point. It didn't go down, it went up. A bump that wouldn't have raised any red flags before the pandemic. But this single data point is not the only indication of how our economy is faring. Last month, only two 168,000, excuse me, 266,000 new jobs were added to the economy. That's a quarter, 25% of what economists have predicted. Now again, 266,000 new jobs would not have been a bad jobs report before the pandemic because we were literally at nearly full employment. But we aren't currently in a build mode. We are currently digging our way out of a hole, a recession. 
to be specific. We're still missing 8 million jobs that existed prior to the pandemic. I don't think anyone expected all those jobs to come back overnight, but we did expect to be faring far better than this. As I said, the economists said this is a quarter of what they anticipated. Well, this is the first full month of data since our Democratic colleagues passed their $2 trillion so-called rescue plan on top of the trillions of dollars that we spent in 2020. If things continue to go the rate we're on now, we're in for an extremely long recovery. In other words, sometimes policies that emanate from Washington actually make the recovery harder, not easier. Unfortunately, the administration is doing more to slow down the recovery than they are to solve it. Last year, Republicans and Democrats worked together to provide unprecedented assistance to workers and their families hit by this economic downturn. Bolstered unemployment benefits were intended to provide laid off workers with the money they needed to support their families until they could return to work. And over the last year, many of those workers have fortunately gotten back on the job. These benefits were a lifeline for millions of families, and today there are still workers unable to find a new job. But there are, unfortunately, also people abusing the system, the generosity of the American people and the American taxpayer. The partisan relief bill our Democratic colleagues pushed through earlier this year extended supplemental unemployment benefits through September of this year, far beyond the amount of time anyone would have expected that those benefits, the supplemental benefits to the state unemployment benefits would be needed. Even as vaccinations were on the rise, our Democratic colleagues insisted on extending these benefits through September. And many of us predicted the outcome. Last spring, workers couldn't find jobs. Now, businesses can't find workers. Between bolstered unemployment benefits and a steady stream of stimulus checks, many people who lost their jobs can't be convinced to return to the workforce. One restaurant owner in Texas said he'd had plenty of applicants. People just won't show up for the interviews. One day when he had scheduled eight interviews for potential employment, only one applicant showed up. The next day, the same thing happened. Five scheduled interviews, one person showed up. He said, it makes you wonder, are they just filling these applications out to collect unemployment? Because, of course, most unemployment benefits require you to apply for work and to accept it if it's offered. But apparently here, whatever the incentives are, they're simply persuading some people to fill out applications, but then not to seriously pursue work. In a year's time, we've gone from the strongest economy in the generation to the government paying people to stay home. This is, uh, reminds me of the discussion we had a couple of years ago when the Green New Deal was launched. An overview of the bill was listed on a website of one of its authors and said that the government would foot the bill for any person who is, quote, unable or unwilling to work. Unable or unwilling to work, that the government would foot the bill. That was the proposal initially when the Green New Deal was rolled out. Unwilling to work. Don't like your job? Don't want to get out of bed in the morning? Don't worry. Hardworking Americans who are getting up and going to work every day will foot the bill so you can stay home. I'm sure it comes as no surprise that this received a great deal of criticism and even ridicule two years ago. Unfortunately for the taxpayers who actually do get up every morning and go to work, we're seeing this play out in real time. Folks who lost their job and who are now able but unwilling to return to work can continue to reap the bolstered unemployment benefits that our Democratic colleagues provided for them through September. Another restaurant owner in Texas said between the stimulus checks and the unemployment that enhanced unemployment benefits, it's tough to find people who want to work at all. He said, I believe our biggest competition in the job market is the government. And this isn't an isolated problem. In Texas, the average unemployment benefits equal more than $36,000 a year. In Washington State, you can receive $39,000 a year 
in unemployment benefits. In Massachusetts, it's $41,000 a year. A few governors have said their states will stop offering the bolstered benefits because it's a disincentive for workers to get back on the job. If you're able to stay home and bring in as much money, or maybe even more than you were earning while you were actually working, what is the incentive to go back? This poor job report isn't a surprise to anyone who's spoken to employers, as I have, who have said repeatedly that no one wants to return to work when they can get paid to stay home. Another factor is that likely contributed to the slow recovery is the slow reopening of schools. Despite the fact that in many states, teachers are among the first individuals to get vaccinated, the return to classrooms has been incredibly slow. Less than half the school districts throughout the country are operating fully in person. The nearly $2 trillion that our Democratic colleagues rammed through Congress in March did little to get us back on track. It sent more than $120 billion more to K through 12 schools that were already flush in cash, but attached no requirement that the money be used to actually get children back in the classroom where we know they will learn best. If at least one parent has to be home with their children for even part of the week, that makes it incredibly difficult for them to return to work. For single parents, it's virtually impossible. If we're ever gonna get our economy back on track, we need to get our children safely back in school. We need to get people who are able, but who are currently unwilling to work, to get back on the job. And we need to supply the businesses that managed to survive this past year with a reliable workforce. Right now, the biggest hurdle to our economic recovery is the government itself. That needs to change. If you ask the president or a number of our Democratic colleagues in the Senate, they'd say the solution is easy, the American Jobs Plan. That's spend more money. This proposal is part social safety net, part infrastructure, part taxpayer-funded spending spree. It's really designed to transform America into Europe, a social safety net economy. It spends more than $2.5 trillion on things like electrical vehicle chargers and home health care, which we're happy to debate in any other context, but what we really need is a jobs plan to get America back to work, not another Trojan horse like we've seen passed earlier this year and is currently being advertised, for example, under the guise of being an infrastructure bill. In order to finance this plan, along with the President's America's Families Plan, our Democratic colleagues want to want the, to enact the largest tax hike in a generation. So contrary to what we did in 2017, by lowering the tax burden and giving people more of what they earn, and we've seen those tremendous economic results as a, as a consequence, our Democratic colleagues want us to, while we're still at 6% unemployment, they want to raise taxes, which will further retard the economic recovery. So to recap, the plan for economic recovery is to make it more expensive for businesses to operate and nearly impossible for them to find workers. No wonder the economy isn't rebounding like we hoped. That's what happened to the million jobs that were projected to be in the latest jobs report when it was unfortunately a disappointing 25% of those million jobs. So instead of building on the successes of 2017 and the pre-pandemic economy, the administration wants to double down on the old, tired belief that America can tax and spend and regulate itself to prosperity. We don't need dramatic tax increases or sweeping social safety programs to get our economy back on track. We need to replicate the same factors that led to our banner pre-pandemic recovery. We need to get our children safely back in the classroom so their parents can return to the workforce. And we need to stop paying workers to sit on the sidelines. And we need to give the job creators the ability to drive our economy forward. Democrats don't have a, an American something plan for every problem. Sometimes all the government has to do is get out of the way.